it is in here that I think the starlings were nesting and their little wood chips and bits of leaf and bits of elephant dung actually. That's interesting, I've never, hadn't realized that. The starlings and probably those woodpeckers, woodpeckers, those wood hoopoos have used elephant dung as nesting material, which I think is a very good idea because dry elephant dung, A, smells very nice and B, um, is very soft. Doesn't smell like elephant dung anymore, smells a bit like bird, which isn't great. But all around this dead knobthorn tree that I think is was probably pushed over, not by an elephant, I think on closer inspection, it was the wind and the amount of rain that we had that eventually caused this great giant to fall. Uh, all around it, there are hollow nesting sites, and so the starlings and the oxpeckers and the woodpeckers and the barbets and the hoopoos and various other hole nesting birds would absolutely come and use this tree as a place to live. So I think that's rather nice and it's very easy to climb now, of course, which is nice. And the first thing I had to do, of course, was make sure as I climbed up here that the bark wasn't going to come away to reveal something that might bite me or sting me, such as a scorpion or scorpion. And there we have a millipede, which has been disturbed by my good self, unfortunately for it, and it didn't bite me or sting me but I just need to be a little bit careful as to what's going on here because what I did find, Dave, if you come up to this side, tell me when you can see here. You see where I'm pointing? Yep. That is the uh, skin of a snake. So there was a snake living under the bark of this tree and I don't know what kind of snake it would have been actually. I'm trying to rack my brain, not a very big one. But it was a definitely a snake living under the bark of the tree. It is uh, not here anymore, which is quite nice for me, but of course not great for you who were perhaps hoping to see a snake in this tree. So that is the story of this ancient knobthorn, which is now unfortunately no longer going to provide much of a stand. And as it's of course fallen to the ground, so unfortunately will it become, well, it's gonna rot basically until I fall off it. <laughs> What are you laughing at, Megan? Megan seems to be finding this whole affair quite amusing, which I think is not very nice. She's intimating with her young laugh that the old man that is myself is not very athletic in a tree. Well, Megan, I might have something to say about that a little bit later on. Ooh, before we go to Byron, who apparently is bumbling around, um, oh, bungling probably more likely, there is a piece of redness here. Can you see that, Dave? Can you see here? I'm not going to touch it because it's meat. Oh, uh, yes, I do. That is, something has been killed here. And I wonder if it wasn't a bird chick. I wonder if it wasn't a chick from one of those birds that has now been extracted and sort of dropped there. Anyway, that is my story. All right, Byron.